there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like doing a little bit of DIYing with me today? Well, come on in. Let's get started. What do I have going on for you for today? These are Dollar Tree DIYs that I think you are absolutely gonna love. I'm gonna go so far as to say they are 100% Dollar Tree DIYs that are quick, easy, budget friendly. They're gonna save you a ton of money if you wanna do them and I absolutely love the outcome of them. So guess what I'm gonna do? I am, I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it and let's do some Dollar Tree DIYing because why not? Because we can. And that's what we do here. Let's get started. If you're interested in being featured as a crafter of the day in one of my videos, submit a picture of one of your recreations of a DIY that I've done to either Facebook or Instagram. If you wanna DM it to me, you can. Then you just simply have to look out for the end of each video to see if it's your DIY that I will be featuring in that given video jumping on into this first DIY. I did. I picked up five of the large packs of Dollar Tree's tumbling tower blocks. I believe I only used four, but nonetheless, five is a good deal. We're going to start off by gluing four rows of four blocks together. Now, when I glue these together, I like to glue them side by side. I do keep a ruler on hand just to straighten them out. I don't believe I show that. But yeah, just keep a ruler on hand and it helps keep them straighter. The glue that I'm using is the Wood Glue by Super Glue. This is a glue that you can find in the tool section at Dollar Tree. And I tell ya, I love it. Once I've got those four sets of four blocks glued together on the side there, I'm gonna go ahead and place more glue and I'm gonna glue them together side by side making, I guess, one big block. Now it's best to kind of glue them together while they're still wet. So that way you can kind of maneuver the blocks and fill in as many of the gaps as you can. Because these blocks, well, they're not cut evenly. And so yeah, it's just best to do it while the glue is still wet to give you some wiggle room. You're gonna need two sets of these blocks, four sets of four blocks. We are so not done gluing blocks together. You're gonna need to glue together four sets of five. So this is just one block more in each row, which is going to make this block just one row wider than the two we did before. And you're just gonna need one of these. And now we're gonna glue four sets of seven blocks. I know it may seem like a lot of gluing of blocks, but when you only need four packs of those Jenga blocks. In essence, this is a $5 project and I am promising you the outcome is amazing. And I love doing DIYs working with Jenga blocks because I feel like it's repurposing the blocks and it gives it a fun rustic look. And it's a lot less expensive and less work than working with say plywood and nails. So yes, as crafters, we like to get crafty and repurpose things. All right, so now we are going to take our four, our two sets of four and our one set of five blocks there and these four sets of seven, you see what I'm doing here, right? And I'm gonna glue these together, kind of framing it out, leaving a center opening here. Once those are good and glued together, guess what? These metal bowls at Dollar Tree, yep, they're gonna fit right there or so I thought, you'll see. But nonetheless, this DIY turns out amazing. Now I'm gonna go with four sets of 27 blocks because I am making a dog food and water stand. And so, yeah, the longer side is 27 blocks. Once I've got those 27 blocks glued together, I'm gonna take two rows of the 27 and glue them together. And this is going to give us the height of our stand. Now this can vary depending on, I guess, how you want it. Do you want it to be taller? Then do another set of 27. Now we're gonna need four rows of 12 blocks and this is gonna be for the shorter side, the width of the stand. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and glue two rows of those together as well. 
You can see that just by using that wood glue, this is a pretty sturdy piece. It's not going anywhere. If you wanna reinforce it on one side with popsicle sticks, you can. I didn't see a need. Now I'm gonna take those two rows of 27 blocks, the longer pieces, and I'm gonna place some glue here on the side and I'm gonna place it. What ended up, I showed you here on top, but I ended up moving it down to the side because for some reason, I don't know what I was thinking, but before I did that, I did decide to go in with pieces of Jenga block there on the inside and reinforce it and hold it together. You don't wanna put those Jenga blocks too close to the edge there because you still need to put the sides up and you don't want those pieces to interfere with how your sides, I guess, set on the stand itself. Does that make any sense? So yeah, just go ahead and put some Jenga blocks there, but you will see here, let me show you. Yeah, so you'll see here that there's glue right along the top of the long side. I just went ahead and lifted that piece up and put it down along the side of it. And again, kept the reinforcements of the Jenga blocks. Don't worry too much about any gaps. That's what those extra Jenga blocks are there for to really hold it together. We are going to fix those gaps a bit later. Don't worry about the corners that they're not meeting perfectly because there is some fine tuning that we're gonna be doing and this piece is going to look amazing. And so you can see here that that is what my corners will look like and that is okay, I promise you, just go with it. On the corners there, all four of them, if you just run a bead of glue right along the edges there, just like so, then you're gonna take two of the Jenga blocks that you stacked on top of each other and just place it on the corner and that's gonna finish those corners off nicely. Now I'm gonna go in with some of Dollar Tree's spackling and I'm gonna fill in the gaps. Now some may say, forget it Kelly, this is just too much work. This is crafting, that's what us DIYers like to do. We like to create and do our own projects and save a ton of money doing it. I don't always like quick and easy projects. Sometimes I like some that I gotta put a bit of work into because the result is well worth it. So just taking some spackling, you can fill in these gaps. I did, did this at night, so that way in the morning when I woke up, it was good and ready to sand. And here you can see just how much spackling I did put on this. Spackling is easy to sand. It took me maybe a whole 10 minutes to sand this down. Sorry, I didn't show you, but it really filled in all of those gaps and smoothed this out. Now I'm gonna go in with some of Apple Barrel's black matte paint and give this a good couple coats of that. Dug into my stash of stencils. Stencils are one of my favorite things to craft with because they're reusable. They're budget friendly, they're reusable, and it's a great alternative to the Cricut and vinyl and stickers. When I craft with stencils, I like to use a sponge dabber versus a paintbrush because it really helps with the bleedage. Now, this was an older sponge dabber, so it didn't work as well as I needed it to, but you know what, for this DIY, I wasn't looking for perfection because, in my opinion, a lot of times, the more imperfect something is, the more perfect it is. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna place a bunch of these paw prints because this is for my fur babies, Winnie and Ibiza. I don't know that you can call them babies anymore, but they sure are still puppies, and I love them to pieces. And I did, I had fun with the paws. I kind of outlined it. The color I used was Apple Barrel's khaki. Now there are some mishaps here. So before I go in and sand it, I am going to go in with my black Apple Barrel paint and I'm gonna touch up some of the black where I kind of went over the stencil. You can see I went ahead and fixed that up now. But I wanna add some age to this and I can easily do that using a light grade sandpaper and just kind of sanding over that, all those paw prints, kind of distressing them, lightening them up, making them uneven, which really adds to the rustic aged feel of this. And what I love about this is because it was made with Jenga blocks, it's gonna really bring some of that wood paint in, show the shape of the Jenga blocks. And yeah, and again, I just wanna point out that you can see just how well using the spackling worked in this and it really filled in the gaps. So when you're gluing those blocks together, don't worry too much about them being perfect. I would worry more about them being straight. And if there are gaps, well, you saw how we remedied that. 
And I do also want to point out that if you do have larger dogs, this can easily be done on a larger scale just by making the side pieces, I guess, of your dog bowl stand a bit longer and that's gonna make the holes wider. You really are gonna wanna base it on whatever bowl you use. So I suggest finding the bowl first, then creating your piece around it. This is gonna be perfect for our dogs because when they do get moist food, they only get a cup of it. I know a lot of the Dollar Trees in my area don't carry the metal bowls, but McCormick's has these great storage containers, these plastic ones. Three come in a pack. They are a very durable plastic and they fit perfectly in this as well. And you can find them in several different sizes as well. So if you can't get the metal ones, use the plastic. Let's take a look at this piece. For this next DIY, I picked up one of Dollar Tree's plain doormats. If you can't find a plain one, don't worry. I'm gonna fold it in half because I wanna find the center of this mat. So by folding it in half side to side, then up and down and just kind of creasing it, you're gonna find the center point and that's kind of important. You're also gonna need some of Dollar Tree's decorative nautical rope. You're probably gonna need five of these. Trust me, it's worth it. I cut a piece that's about eight inches, found the center of it just by folding it in half and I'm gonna glue it to the center of my mat there that I found using some hot glue. I cut two more pieces at six inches, folded those in half, and on one side of that rope there, I am carefully going to place some hot glue. These pieces, they're gonna go on each end of that eight inch piece that I placed in the middle, and I'm gonna place it in the shape of a V, just like you see me doing here. And I'm gonna do that on both sides of that eight inch piece of rope. Now for the fun part. This is where the five bunches of the rope comes in. I'm gonna go ahead and outline this piece here that I've placed on the doormat. And I'm just gonna keep going round and round those center pieces with the nautical rope. Now you, again, can make this piece as large or as small as you want. It really is gonna be to your liking. I'm going with the size that's gonna work for me. And yeah, I'm just gonna sit here and I believe I was watching Walking Dead while I was doing this, binge watching that. And so yeah, this took me, I wanna say probably about an hour to outline. And you are gonna wanna be generous with your hot glue because you really want that rope to stick to the doormat. I know, right? So stinking cute. Who knew that you could make a dog bone doormat or even a bowl mat out of Dollar Tree rope and it turns out this cute. To frame this out, I am gonna go in with some of the white nautical rope from Dollar Tree. Again, just to frame it out, add that finishing touch to it. And I tell ya, I am loving, loving, loving this piece. It cost me a total of, I wanna say it was under $10 to make. And really, it's not gonna cost you much more if you wanna make it bigger, and it's gonna cost you less if you wanna make it smaller. But would you look at how stinking cute this is, made out of Dollar Tree's rope. Now it's time to just finish this off by cutting off the excess doormat from the sides of what is my dog bone mat. I love it. Now someone might ask me, why did you use the mat? Because I feel like the doormat added stability to this, so if I wanna put it outside, or if I wanna put their dog bowls on it, I can. It's water and somewhat weather resistant, and so I felt like it was just a good option for making my dog bone mat, my rope dog bone mat. I love this. I don't know that I have a favorite the dog bowl holder or the bone mat. I love them both. They were quick, they were easy, they were budget friendly. You're gonna save a ton of money. The only thing I wish I would have done differently was make the bowl holder a bit bigger. I hope you all enjoyed today's Dollar Tree Pet DIYs for Pet Appreciation Month. If you're looking for more DIY inspiration, well guess what? You can click on the video right over here 
and it'll take you to some of my past favorites. Until next time, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. But most of all, you know what I'm gonna say. Stay positive, please, because I'm sure doing it.